Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has really brought into sharp focus the long-standing gaps and weaknesses in our education system. But as we reopen schools after many weeks of being shuttered, have there been missed opportunities, opportunities not taken uh, to reform our publicly funded education system, as the maxim goes, you know, to build back better. So our guest today is Simparangam MP Mazli Malek, who recently published his account of the 20 months he was education minister and the lessons that were learned about the process of implementing education reform, as well as the real challenges that come with that. Masli, welcome to the show. It's really good of you to join us today. Congratulations on publishing uh, Memory Book and Memoir. Congratulations on the book. Hello. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Sharad. Thank you very much, Melissa. <laughs> All right. So, of course, uh, as, as an independent MP, we also want to tap you for uh, what's happening in the political scene and where you see the trajectory of the country. Mm -hmm. But let's focus our conversation first, mostly on this book. Uh, very curious to know why you named it Memory, Book and Memoir. <laughs> and also, why, why now? I mean, I'm just wondering who this book was for, because, you know, it was really about your time as edu education minister. So what was it that you hoped to achieve uh, by writing and publishing this book? Okay, thank you, Melissa. I, perhaps the, there were two questions <laughs> that you imposed to me. Number one, why memory, book and memoir? I'm having the book with me now. Oh, but, wow, it's not really clear. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so wh why the name? I think uh -huh. uh, memories is all about memories in the Ministry of Education with all the facts, with all the data, you could see all the letters, all the memos, and all sorts of diagrams in there. And it's not a memoir, because normally people write memoir just because they have ended their journey. So they're lamenting back, they're, you know, uh, retrospecting back, whatever they have gone through. But for me, it's only the beginning. And I want to start a new culture in uh, Malaysian politics, as well in... Uh, Malaysian, uh, let me say, cultural life that uh, any politicians, any ministers should write down whatever they've gone through and should share with the community, with the, with the, with the nation, their vision and their, you know, their dreams uh, for the country. And it's all must be recorded. So coming back to your uh, second question, to whom it's dedicated, it's dedicated for my fellow beloved Malaysians, for our future generation. So I want it to be a historical do uh, document for everybody to know that there was an attempt uh, for an educational reform. There was an attempt of a serious education reform that had been taken place uh, in a very brief, short period of 20 months. And we have started, but unfortunately, most of them have been uh, stopped or abandoned but still few of them are uh, still being continued. So it's my gift to the nation, it's my gift to a better Malaysia in the future. Masli, uh, you know, I agree with you. I think politicians, I think everybody really should reflect on their work and, and put it out in the public realm so that it becomes, um, you know, a kind of collective learning process, right? Uh, but, uh, and I remember interviewing you as minister and you were very cautious about, um, you know, speaking uh, critically of your stakeholders, main stakeholders, meaning uh, the civil service. When I asked you questions around resistance to change, and I wonder if I was very cautious in answering your question. Then, yeah, yes, you were, and, and I, I, especially imagine, Melissa's. Yeah, you know, I think you know, even today, because you know. You know uh, if you return as Minister of Education or a member of the uh, the next government or the succeeding government, uh, you will have to work with uh, people in the ministry, the bureaucracy and civil service. How honest can someone like you, how honest can your, your memoirs or your memories be uh, when dealing with uh, a, a hot potato like education and education reform? I think you... The best is for you to read the, the book. I have been honest enough to share everything uh, under the table, on the table, 
everywhere, uh, apart from you know some unnecessary things. But to be honest with you, uh, there were few things that are uh, mentioned in the book that has caused a storm in the teacup, but not that storm. Storm, <laughs> but few people are not very happy with it. But are, are you talking about the black right. shoe controversy? No, no, no. I, I didn't even talk about it because I, I don't see it worth enough to to be mentioned as part of uh, the journey that uh, we have gone through in that twenty months. You know, rather than talking about that small but yet the effect on the families and on the parents especially moms was very big but again we we have a lot of other big things to to be dealt with i mean you're talking about big data there's the, the stem program that we introduced i mean the academic freedom uh, not only for the for the faculties or the, the academics but also for the students and all the attempts that uh, we, we 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 have started, you know, in in uplifting the quality of uh, our teachers and schools and also the curriculum. Yeah. I, I mean, you you did accomplish, you know, some of the things you set out to do in your your twenty months as as you can minister. But I I do want I to hope come I did. back to that. I do want to come back to that uh, black shoe controversy because, and I don't mean to harp on this, but I want perhaps to understand where you uh, your reflections on this why I, I do you think, think, I think the public latched on to that so I much think, it was as you said a minor yeah, issue but yeah, why yeah i think this uh, nearly 500 uh, pages book uh, could furnish malaysians that uh, the 20 months is more than the black shoes i mean we need to understand the, the education reform has been initiated and has started in that 20 months. But unfortunately, I, I don't want to blame anybody, but uh, most people, they like to pick up on, on, on certain unnecessary and uh, light things, sensational light things. But I couldn't blame them. Rather than blaming them, I, I came up with this nearly 500 pages book in order to educate our fellow Malaysians and our media people that you know education is more than black shoes. Okay, and so Martin, you, 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 I'm, glad, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the media because, uh, you know, some people will say that, in fact, the media was quite hostile to the Pakatan uh, Harapan government. Uh, much of the media was owned by allies of, the, you know, the, the losing coalition, the Barisan National Coalition, and they continued to be in, uh, to, to, uh, to express the agenda of, that, of the former, you know, sort of power brokers. Um, um, do you maybe think... but but also Sharad, to be to be fair with everybody i would say that uh, most of media, most of the media they were overwhelmed with the uh, magnitude of freedom that had been given to them then and and some of them they were not really used to it and they thought that okay it's a free blank check you can do anything and you know we learn the the price of freedom uh, and they also learned the price, price of freedom and they only Appreciate that when they lost it in the in the last uh, eighteen months that uh, we have gone through. Yeah. Chara, did you want to continue with your question? No, no, no. That was a perfect answer. I thought you were going to do something. All right, then I, I do want to come to the question about uh, communicating the complexities of policy making and mm -hmm. reform in the education system. I know you, uh, you know, part of your education strategy when you were minister was really to impose a values based education. You talked a lot about happiness and well being and improving that quality across the system, leaving uh, no one behind. I'm just wondering. Uh, whether you felt that reform was far more complex than what you anticipated, than what has been communicated to the public, and therefore it took much longer to, to implement the, the, the big necessary reforms that the public was so impatient for when, uh, when you know, Pakatan Harapan came to power on the back of their manifesto of reform. Yes, indeed, Melissa. I think you you have mentioned them all. I mean, when when I first came into the office, because of my previous background, I was an academic, and I was an activist as well. So we thought that uh, okay, we are in. We want to change everything, without knowing that uh, the level of intricacy of changing things when you are in the system. <laughs> we were outside the system. We we're criticizing. I mean, I mean, 
when we step in, then we started to learn about the complexity of our, our bureaucratic system, Sharad mentioned it earlier, and our delivery system, our, you know, and communication. Yes, Melissa, I still remember when you, <laughs> when you did ask me what did I learn throughout that. One of my major failures was on, uh, was on communication. Yes, I, I have to admit that. I have to admit that. And I learned a lot of things from it. And that, that's one thing. And another thing, the politics inside it, the politics and politicking. You know, we try to avoid, uh, we try to take away education from politics, but the reality of uh, our beloved country is not that easy. You know, everything has been politicized. You talk about uh, not only education, but economy, our social fabric, our social relation, and everything being heavily politicized and worse. The racial sentiment comes in. So to juggle with all these things, you know, you need to balance between your ideals and the reality. You need to balance between uh, whatever good you think you wanted to bring and to make people, the stakeholders and the shareholders understand what you really want and why it is good not only for yourself, for your government, but, but also for the nation and for them and for their children. It's quite challenging. I still remember when I had uh, a, a lunch meeting with Professor Terence Gomez. Uh, that was towards the end of 2019. He was very vocal towards uh, the the government, uh, despite being appointed by MOE to to certain for, for certain tasks. But he was very vocal, especially towards the let me say our inability to to accomplish all this administration reform, governance reform. So I shared with him, I told him that, you know, it will take more than a year to get the civil servants, the bureaucrats to really understand what we aspire for. You know, they have been there longer than us and definitely they've got used to certain things and, and the way things been uh, been run. But, you know, we came as a new kids on the block, and we were to, we, we 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 wanted to change everything, and not only that, we want to push them beyond their comfort zone. So it is not that easy, but we learn a lot. At least for myself, I learn a lot, and the best teacher is your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. We're going to take a quick break, but let's come back and continue this conversation. Still, quite a lot to cover on the issue of education reform, as well as the. Uh, political temperature of this country. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Mazi Malik in just a couple of minutes. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to consider this. Hello, thank you so much for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. Let's continue our conversation with Simparangam MP Mazli Malik. He has just published a book called uh, Memory Book and Memoir by his time as Education Minister. We understand that an English version will be released uh, in a couple of months. Uh, Mazli, I want to come back to the, the reforms. So this book was really a reflection of your successes, also your failures and the challenges. And I want to talk about um, the policies that you managed to implement and whether those policies, you're keeping track of those policies. Are they, have they been reversed? Uh, are you seeing a policy re reversal after you've left office? Um, I, 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 and does that upset you or is that just the nature of, of the game, you know, nature of changing uh, ministers? I uh, thank you, Melissa, for the question. I think it's not about me and myself. It's not about uh, me and what I've written, what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do. But it's about the nation. Uh, what is the best for the nation? Uh, so honestly, when we talk about things that I've written in this book, uh, why I call it? It's not a memoir because it's not about myself. It's not, it's not about me. It's about the nation. It's about the the, the future of the nation. It's about the educational system that uh, we wanted uh, Malaysia to have. And I mean, the, the, the very uh, dream that we all were having and still having is for Malaysia to, to, <laughs> to, to, to be more than what it is now. So most of the things, yeah, you say that uh, some of the policies that uh, we, we, we have managed to, to, uh, to accomplish or we, we managed to start it with, but unfortunately, 
the yeah, I mean, one of the things that I thought was quite interesting that I didn't know when you were in office yeah. was that you had intended to address sexual harassment in schools. Yes, yes, that was one yes. of the things that you were looking yes, at. Yes, and yes. I had had no idea. I mean, that was not kind of communicated to the public. Maybe you exactly. can use that as an example of a yeah. reform that you wanted to, that you started yeah. and you wanted to implement, but never quite achieved. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 again, it's not about me. Melissa, you said, what was I? <laughs> did I feel sad? Did I feel, you know, disgruntled? I mean, it's not about me, it's about the nation. Just like I mentioned earlier, I mean, we, we, we tried to put everything in order. We, we have started uh, with, 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 with a lot of initiatives for the best of the nation. But when they stop doing it, I think the one that's going to lose is the country. Yeah, Masi, Masi, yeah. Masi I, I have this thought, right? I mean, a lot of people assume that going forward, Malaysian politics is going to be much more fragmented. I mean, the, the political parties, the co yeah, yeah. coalition building, the capacity for politics of that sort to have a coherent uh, policy agenda and that can that can be carried through uh, within the you know the the terms of the electoral cycle do you think that something like education is far too important to be held ransom by politics in the sense that should we somehow strive to take policy making around education, which is all about social mobility, about the future of work, about you know the, the aspirations that the next generation have for themselves, take that out somehow insulated from the politicking that we're likely to uh, experience over the next few electoral cycles. Is there any way to bring um, policy making into a space that can be much more, uh, or sorry, less sensitive to the the vagaries of politics. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, precisely, Sharon. I think that's the dream of all of us. The dream of all the people. We, we really want education to be taken out from all these politicians, political agenda, and politicians. But the reality in Malaysia is, is very unfortunate. You, you can see that. Uh, the level of is inconsist, uh, inconsistency of 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 of, of uh, the education policy that I mean that was resulted of uh, a long inherited uh, I don't want to use the word corrupted but uh, not perfect system that 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 we have has caused that a lot. But one thing, uh, yes, you you pointed out a very uh, pertinent question. It can be done at least at the higher education level. This is where I keep asking, I keep demanding the government to re-establish or at least to continue our effort that we have started to re-establish the Majlis Pendidikan Tinggi Negara Council, the Council for uh, National Higher uh Education, in which those who got involved in setting up all the uh, all these uh, policies and 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 all these things related to higher education uh, institutions are the professionals, the academics, the intellectuals, and they have, I mean, their own uh, sanctuary. I mean, which is the case of most higher uh, learning institutions in, in in developed countries. We have started that, and actually, we already have a law for that. Act 546, you can read uh, in this book, I mentioned that, and, and we have initiated it. But unfortunately, after the government change, they did not uh, continue with that effort, and nobody knows what happened to that uh, council. I keep asking them in the parliament, that, but there was no answer. And that's how things work in Malaysia, it's very unfortunate. But coming back, because you Coming back to myself, you, you did ask me being an independent and how do I look? I think what I'm trying to do, I'm not sure whether you, you, you did notice or everybody else did notice. I'm still struggling to convince myself that I'm a politician now. <laughs> because I, so, some, some of them I still remember when I left the, the Dewan Rakyat, a few veteran politicians or let me say the, uh, the the, the, the old school politician, they came to me and said that, oh, uh, I think you're more to a lecturer than a politician. <laughs> okay, wherever I am, I'm trying to bring a new political culture, mm. policy advocacy, 
and also service politics. This, this is where. Are you, you, are you thinking? Are you are you reconsidering your your future in politics? Is this something? No, 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 not not really. What I'm trying to okay. say, Melissa, is I'm trying to bring a new culture to politics, rather than you know, having a very partisan, heavily politicizing issues. I think I'm consistent. I'm talking. I'm, I'm really focused on education. So, I'm really yeah. advocating education and policies that will bring uh, our education to the next level. So this right. is where you you, right. you 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 always listen little from me about politics and more about education. Yeah, Muslim, you know, I, I think we Very all right. think there's a slight danger in far too many career politicians, men and women who don't have another job to go to so they can, you know, they never want to resign or let go of power. <laughs> it's great to know that there's some professionals in a parliament. I, I do want to ask you, though, uh, because the nature of politics today is that, you know, party political vehicle, party politics is the vehicle uh, to get into power. And, you know, at the education ministry, because of its huge budget, I mean, not much bang for that buck, but never mind, it's a huge budget, is a prized possession for, uh, for you know, career politicians. How do we how do we change that? I mean, your your you know the fact that you were nominated to the education ministry is quite interesting uh, in for in, Pakistan. But subsequently, do you think we will revert back to the uh, to um to the culture of you know giving ministries away as rewards for political loyalty, uh, which will you know will affect uh, education reform in the future? Future. Yeah, I strongly agree with you, Sharad. We we, we should. Uh take away education from the politicians. And we did that, actually. In the early 2000s, we had uh, Tansri Musa Muhammad as our uh, Minister of Education. And he, he was not even an MP. And he was not even involved in uh, any po party politics. And if you look at countries, I mean, not far away, even Indonesia, our neighbor, they appointed a non-politician to become their Minister of Education, uh, uh, Nadim Makarin. A well-known businessman, I mean, to become. And why not? Why not Malaysia? We should, I mean, get away from this idea of, you know, putting uh, the Minister of Education in the hands of politicians. I mean, this is where, but, but again, as for myself, I think wherever I am, as an MP, as a minister, wherever the, uh, I, I was put or I choose to be, whether in a party or outside the party, is all about education. And my very vision for politics is to improve the condition of our nation education and if i manage to do that i managed to accomplish that i would go to something else then <laughs> but at the moment we're not there yet <laughs> okay well in the last few minutes that we have left i do want to maybe take a moment to to reflect on the past one and a half years or, or more than 18 months or so that uh, schools have been impacted by the, the COVID-19 pandemic specifically k-12 you know i mean i mean do you think that there were things in maybe difficult choices, difficult decisions that we did not make correctly yeah. or missed uh, particularly and therefore impacting the learning outcomes of our children. Yeah, the biggest thing that they did not do is to embrace everybody in coming up for a better exit plan and for a better long-term plan for education. That's number one. And number two, it seems that the... Fortunately, the, the government never learned from, uh, from other countries and never learned from their mistakes. You know, it has been 18 months and nothing has changed. So this is where I keep pushing for the long-term plan for education and exit plan for education. But until today, we haven't heard anything from them. And as a result, I have to come up with my own. If you notice, in the parliament, I did come up with my own policy statement, which actually a proposal, a long, an exit and long-term proposal for nation education. All right. And you yeah. are for a reopening of schools come October 3rd? 3rd? No, it's not about for the reopening of school, no, but how, what is the method being used for reopening the school or for something else to, 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 to happen? And we couldn't see a proper method being used here. What more about science and data? This is where I keep pushing them to establish the Council for National Education uh, Recovery. 
Okay. All right. Well, Mansley, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate your time. That Done. was... Yes, that was our uh, that was our conversation with former Education Minister Masli Malay, and that wraps up this episode of Consider This. Don't forget to get the latest news on COVID nineteen vaccines on astroawani.com as well as the Astro Awani app. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutun signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Mm -hmm.